There are a couple of considerations to uh, keep in mind. First off, a post-it note has 100 sheets in it, and at 24 frames a second, that's about 4 seconds. You have 10 keyframes, so that means that once every 10 frames, you're going to have a keyframe. If you want to go fast, you use fewer frames. If you want to slow it down, you use, fewer, you use more frames. So we're going to put our fifth keyframe at around 40 or 45 and decelerate our object. And then we're going to go from back to front because it's a flip book and you're going to be holding it on the left. So that's what you have to keep in mind. So first you're going to draw your first frame, skip a few pages, and then draw your second keyframe. So I think I've skipped eight pages here. Then I'm going to go right in between them and kind of uh, start filling in the gaps, um, leaving a couple of blanks in between. And then I'm going to go in between those and fill them. Now, one of the issues hits where you kind of develop some motion and then you realize that you hit your keyframe wrong. So um, with the way we're doing it, you can just kind of adjust that and it's no big deal. In other sort of situations, you may want to uh, readjust everything you've done so that you can absolutely hit your keyframe. Um, so another thing to keep in mind is that um, objects as they move may change their shape. So I've chosen sort of a ball kind of shape, but I'm going to make the ball squish and flatten as it kind of hits certain areas and then make it extend out and seem to move in a sort of more lively way. So as it hits corners, of, it's going to compress and expand as if it's kind of a, a more putty-like substance. So when I test it out, you can kind of see that it has this moment where it hits the bottom, compresses, and then elongates again as it goes up. Then I'm going to skip a few pages, do another keyframe, and then I'm going to work my way back towards that keyframe. And here at the crest, it's not going to expand or contract, it's just going to become more round uh, and become an actual ball shape as it um, kind of reaches the peak of its motion before it comes down. And again, I'm readjusting the keyframe to kind of match what I've done. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go on and add a few more frames um, just to kind of complete that motion up at the apex. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit my keyframe for when it's going to hit the left edge and work my way there, frame by frame. And this is kind of a first draft of an animation. Um, you can probably go back and refine this, um, and you probably should. So we're just using pencil, we're sketching loosely, sketching lightly, and moving fairly quickly. This video is only sped up at double speed. So one of the things to keep in mind about working with a flipbook is that you can pretty easily separate that page. Um, if you have a high volume stapler, it would be really good to actually staple that side. So now we can see that we're getting a, kind of a decent bit of animation going. We've got a couple of seconds done. Um, next, we're going to throw out a keyframe and then fill our way towards that. So this is pretty simple stuff. You don't have to be too um, perfect with it at this stage. If And I recommend not doing anything too complicated. If you bite off more than you can chew, then your animation is not going to turn out the way that you want. I think one of the best exercises you can do is just make a ball roll around and bounce. Um, uh, another one that a lot of people have done is sort of a trampoline kind of a thing. But um, what one of my drawing teachers um, that I'd taken a couple of workshops with, uh, Glenn Vilpew, recommended is um, making one single line move around um, and dance and do different motions because that one line is the most reductive thing that you can do and that can make you focus in on the quality of your animation and getting the sort of life into the animation without having to worry about the technical aspects of drawing per se. So um, that's kind of what we're after here is we're after the motion and the time and we're not necessarily concerned with the drawing itself. So. Here I'm switching to a different animation style. Because I kind of know where everything's going, I'm just going to go frame by frame and do it completely additively um, and just finish it out without the use of keyframe animation. Um, you know, when I don't really 
when I know my end goal and I and I don't have to hit keyframes within a certain amount of time, uh, I can just roll on with the with the project and finish it out in such a way that um, I don't need to skip ahead a few frames to kind of complete the animation ahead of time and know where I'm going. Um, and here the ball is just going to kind of hit the edge and and stop. Now it, I'm putting them closer and closer frame to frame so that they seem to decelerate. So now um, as I finish this off, it's not going to compress as much because it's moving slower and then the ball is just going to kind of stop there. So you can kind of see that it bounces around a few times and the animation ends and that you got a good pretty uh, a good draft of what the animation could be.